Hi guys, it's Shani from Yana Mize and another one bites the dust. Yes, my Porsche Taycan is now sold. I knew you were gonna sell it. Not again. I knew you wouldn't like electric. He never keeps his cars long. He changes his cars more than I change my underpants. I said two months, I called it. I'm obviously not ready for the electric life. There's reasons why I've sold her. Let's have a chat. Okay, why the Taycan never lasted. It's gonna be the usual reasons that I say, you'll probably get triggered at home, but it's me being honest with you guys. So appearance wise, bearing in mind I'm a Lambo man, the Porsche doesn't quite cut it. It's a bit soft, it's very, very rounded, it's like a bubble, whereas a Lambo, it's got the curve, it's got the angles, the doors go up, it just hasn't got that keyword, wow factor so interior there's nothing much going on it's nice uh, it's my personal opinion the seats are okay the steering wheel's nice the center console's okay but it just doesn't doesn't excite me in the car it does the job Porsche will always do the job and they'll always deliver but it's just nothing to, to write home about should we say I'll compare this to the Lambo and I know they're different cars but for me when I get in the Lambo it's, it's an event, it's excitement, and that goes for the Aventador and for the Aurus. When I get in this car, it's literally just pops to the shops and it's, it just does what it says on the tin. It's just a normal, nice car with ridiculous power. But there's nothing that blows me away that, oh my God, I've got to drive this car, I want to take this car, I want to take this car out today. It's, it's just a nice car, it's very nice, which, it's not great for me because I don't like nice. I like out there, I like in your face, I like crazy, I like excitement. Come on! Passion. Come on! Madness. Come on! And the drama. Yes! One second. It's got a little police car, that van hasn't clocked it. Oh, the van just went on the pavement. Look at that, a cash kai. A police cash kai. That's how you get caught. Anyway, right, let's talk about the performance on this car. It's fast, we know it's fast, we know it's rapid, it's insanely quick. But there's no real big show, there's no noise, there's no drama. It's, you, look, I'm driving the car, look, I put my foot down. You've got like the little, the little whistling sounds, but nothing's going on. And it's really weird for my mind to actually try and understand what's going on in the car. I love the fact that it is so quick and I love the speed, but I do like to hear the exhaust, I do like to hear the engine, I do like to hear the gear change. It's electric, so electric has no gears. It's literally just one gear all the way. It just keeps, 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 keeps going. So maybe it's something that I'm just not used to. Doesn't mean, because I'm not used to it, doesn't make it wrong, but it's just my personal opinion on this car. I don't know what you guys think at home of electric cars and having no sound. Listen, one advantage of having no sound though, is that if you're racing around, the police can't hear you coming. That's a big advantage. When you've got a big loud exhaust and they can hear the car, everyone will be like, all right, where's that car, where's that car? With this, you can do this. And no one knows anything at all. They don't know the speed. They don't know, is someone accelerating fast? Nope, you fly underneath the radar. So there's an advantage. You know what's weird, as we're driving, if you look down, I've only done 190 miles in this car and 188 miles uh, rain for this. Yeah. Love that patience. The light had just changed, horns me straight away. All right, mate. Like, <laughs> give me a chance. Driving a white van. Is that you, Lenny? It's like it's like being in a concert. So you're there and you're performing at the front, but there's no there's no one there. It's like you're singing, but no one can hear you. It goes down to that that old thing. Like, if a tree falls in the woods, did it make a sound? Did it? I don't know. Let me know, let me know. Let me know if it, if it made sounds. If a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to hear it, did it make a sound? Or did I just answer the question for you? 
Everyone has opinions. Mm. Never heard that one before. That's jokes. You never heard that before? But if a tree falls in the woods, does it make a sound? If no one's there to hear it. I mean, I thought it was just like, Does it yeah. make a sound? Yeah, what, the sound of it falling? The sound of it so if a tree falls in the woods, mm -hmm. yeah, did it make a sound? Yeah, we just no one heard it. So then, if no one heard it, did it make a sound? So this is the debate. I'm having a debate with Elliot. Elliot's filming. He's never heard that before. You might remember Elliot. Elliot's got the Fiat 500. They call him Criss Cross. They call him, um, they call you, um, <laughs> what do they call you? AJ Tracy. AJ Tracy. <laughs> El always gets the abuse and he doesn't have a Fiat 500. That was the Yanomai's courtesy car. The way my lifestyle is, I can jump in the car and I can go around the corner. I can be in Manchester, I can be in Milton Keynes. I've always got to think about what charges in the car. And that is a bit of a worry. If you've got to drive to Manchester, you've got to drive to Scotland, for example, a 200 mile charge is not going to get you there. So you need to stop and then you've got to hope the charging points are available and you've got to wait half an hour. Time is money and, and my time is really, really valuable. I want to be on the move all the time. If you're in a car, you know there's petrol stations everywhere. It's a quick stop, quick fill up and you're gone. I don't like the fact that I have to plan my route and actually have to think all the time. Have I got enough charge? Do I need to charge it? Can I get to a proper charging point? Then you need to put the proper charging point at your house. Because if you just plug it in normally, it'll take you two days to put charge in this. So you actually have to get like a three phase at your house or you need to go to the proper petrol stations. It's long. I would like an easy life. I just want to be able to get in my car and drive it. And if I need to put fuel, fill it up and away I go. The new cars, I see, but stuck me in. New cars have got so much technology and there's so many different things to play around with. I don't, I don't use half the stuff in any of my cars that I buy. I'll use the heated seats or the massage seats. Um, I'm a good driver, I don't need all the, the, the add-ons. Like you can ask Matt Watson that, he'll, he'll tell you. Do you use everything in your car? Do you actually, like when I spec a car, I'll spec it to have a heated steering wheel or comfort seats or sports seats or the bigger wheels or it'd be the colour coded package um, like the black pack. It'll have the up to date sat nav. Even though I don't even use the sat nav. Can you imagine? I don't use the sat nav in my car, I use Waze. I never ever use sat nav in any of my cars. I don't know why. Just Waze just seems to be easier. I actually don't even know all the technology in this car. And people might be like, oh look, you just bought a car and you're just one of them. Yeah, maybe I'm just one of them. I like to buy things that I like. And if it looks good and it drives nice and it's quick, I'll buy it. I don't need to know what every little thing does in a car. I'm not that guy that will sit there and get the, get the manual out and, and push every single button. As long as I know how to put music on, as long as I know how to start the car and fill it up and know how to put it in Sport Plus and how to do launch control, and how to do like the main functions, like the comfort stuff for the seats, etc. I'm good. I don't need to know where, where if, if I'm facing north and if I'm 360 degrees, the camera on the roof. And I don't need. I'll see it when I when I turn it on. I don't need to be playing around with all the buttons. Is that you at home? Like someone like Tim Shmi, he knows everything. He is meticulous and he will know every little detail and every single point. I personally don't care. I guess it comes down to the type of person you are, the type of driver you are. Everyone's different. And I'm, I'm different. <laughs> I'm cut from a different cloth. I don't want to be like everyone else. I just want to be like me. Be me. Be you. You? Are you you or are you me? Me. You, you, you? If you watch Rush Hour, you'll get that. I am me. He's me. And I'm you. If you haven't, you need to watch Rush Hour. So people always ask, do I lose money? The cars that I buy, do they hold their value? So this is a Porsche Taycan Turbo S where there's not loads of them out there and people need to wait to get a specific spec. I spec this quite, quite well. Didn't put everything on it, but I made sure it had the good wheels, had a nice interior, um, had the things that people generally want. Will this lose money? Not for a while. I think you can probably drive this car for three to six months and quite comfortably get back what you paid for it, like I did. Um, I didn't lose on this car. Obviously there's a video that I've shot uh, telling you about my cars. If you click in the cars, you can see that. Do I finance my cars? Do I buy them outright? Lease them, etc. And which people seem to really like. And that's some of the more content and videos 
that I'm going to try and give you guys at home uh, to try and be real with you. I don't think everyone's honest. You see a lot of social media influencers, you see YouTubers, you see people that do videos. Do they really tell you the truth? Do they really tell you how much their monthly payment is? Do they really tell you? Is it their car? Have they borrowed it from a garage and then um, pretending it's theirs? I don't know. I'm not here to expose anyone. I'm not digging out anyone because that's not me. But what is the truth? I'll always give you the truth. I'll always, I'll always tell you what the real deal is. This car doesn't belong to me anymore. It's sold. My overall experience with this car, it is supercar speed. It's actually supercar money. It's got 160,000 pounds, but people don't know it's a supercar. And does it matter what other people think? Do you buy the car for other people? Do you buy it for yourself? I buy it for myself, but I like the drama. I like the noise. I like people to be like, oh my God, wow, what a car. I don't like to blend in. And that's why I do my cars in Chrome and I always stand out with, with things that I do. I don't like to be the norm. I like to be different. I like to be out there. I like to be original. And if you care what people think, you're gonna have a tough life especially with social media nowadays. So it is 9.30 at night. I've had to come back to work because my Urus is there, but I'm saying goodbye to my Taycan. That is now sold. Same person that bought my Urus. <laughs> same person that bought my G-Wagon has bought my Taycan Turbo S. Um, there it is. There it is. I'm filming it on my phone because there's no one here. But yes, yeah, so I've gone from three cars to two. Until the next one. Oh, it does sound good. And there it is. It's the Porsche Taken, which has a massive panoramic glass roof. First time in it. I've not seen how fast it goes, but I'm about to be shown. Oh f my life, you f get wait, 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 wait! Are you having a laugh? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> What's wrong with it? Oh, what does it do? <laughs> what? 